In this recorded web briefing from March 2013, Stephanie Fawcett, leader of NARA's Records Management Self-Assessment Team, a part of the Records Management Oversight Section, gives us tips for completing NARA's annual Records Management Self-Assessment. Let's join the briefing as Jeff Benson introduces our speaker. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. I'm actually standing near uh, Hickam Field here in Hawaii, so I, I know as soon as I take my phone off mute, uh, Jeff's going to come overhead, but I have a, a quick introduction for you, and again, thanks everybody for participating. We've had such a great turnout for all of the sessions, and as Robin mentioned, we have, they're all going to be on YouTube for those who can't make it, uh, but for every single uh, topic that we've given, there's been a lot of interest, and this, and this particular topic even more so than usual. So we're really grateful for, uh, for Stephanie for putting this on for us. Again, today's session is a how-to guide for completing NARA's Records Management Self-Assessment, which is, again, I think that's going to be really handy for you, both in terms of preparing for the self-assessment that NARA is working with you, and it's also good for um, doing your own, you just, internally, doing a self-assessment for your own purposes as well. Quick little bit of bio-information on Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie Fawcett has been with uh, NARA since 1991. Uh, she is currently a senior records analyst in uh, our records management oversight section. Okay. Uh, Stephanie has been um, NARA's records management self-assessment team lead since July of 2009. She's been in that role, uh, self-assessment team lead. This team is the team that prepares and conducts NARA's annual records management self-assessment, which is, again, why we're having the, uh, the call on this morning, this afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, previously, Stephanie served as a records management director in one of NARA's former regions out in Boston. Uh, she was also a senior foreign policy archivist at the John F. Kennedy Library and an audio tapes archivist on the Nixon Presidential Material staff. So with that, go ahead and uh, take it away, Stephanie. Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, wherever you are. Um, I think some places you're, we, we're straddling the uh, morning and afternoon timeline. As Jeff said, my name is Stephanie Fawcett. I have been the team lead for the Records Management Self-Assessment um, since 2009. So as you can imagine, I have a lot of experience with it. Um, I'm looking at the, the attendee list, and I see some familiar names here, so people that I've talked to over the last um, almost four years now. And I'm glad to have you all here, and I hope that you'll find this session very um, informative and useful going forward. This is the agenda for our briefing. I'm going uh, a little bit over the background of the self-assessment, what it is, uh, when it's conducted, and why it matters. And then we're going to start, I'm going to start giving you some tips for how to complete the self-assessment. And again, I'm hoping you're going to find these very useful. If at any point you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. So on that note, let's begin. Information is the cornerstone of the government. I'm sure you all realize that or are aware of that. Records management is the process that ensures that information created and received by the federal government is managed effectively and efficiently for as long as it's needed. This means that information is readily available to users regardless of what format it's in, where it's located, where the users are located for as long as it's needed, whether it's one day or whether it's forever. Managing this information also ensures that the rights and interests of our citizens are protected, that the government is held accountable for its actions, and information that has historical value is preserved and ultimately transferred to the National Archives to be used by or, or to be viewed by um, our citizens and public. NAR has oversight responsibility for federal records management. The records management self-assessment, also known as the RMSA, so if I speak RMSA, you'll know what I'm talking about, is one way we exercise this responsibility. Other ways include conducting inspections and evaluation of, of agencies' records management practices, and studies of specific records management issues. NARA uses these activities to determine if agency records management programs comply with applicable statutory and regulatory requirements. The self-assessment is just what it says it is. Agencies report to NARA the status of their records management programs. 
records officers or their designees respond to a series of questions on a range of records management activities. NARA analyzes the responses and determines the current state of federal records management. We also identify gaps in programs and recommend strategies to help agencies achieve compliance. The self-assessment results are one of the criteria that we use for determining which agencies we want to obtain additional information from via our inspection or evaluation process. So you need to know that it is something that we look at when we determine um, who we would like to conduct an inspection on. The self-assessment questionnaire is distributed annually to agencies via a web-based survey tool. All agencies, regardless of size and location, that fall under the Federal Records Act are required to complete the self-assessment. We mail a copy of the questionnaire and any supporting documentation, such as document submission instructions or document and document review criteria, to records officers two weeks prior to the opening of the web tool. We do this so records officers can look over the questions, begin to gather any information and documentation that they need, and also to become familiar with the pertinent deadline. All responses must be input into the web tool. Agencies are provided a link to the tool the day the self-assessment begins. And I just want to say here, the self-assessment usually runs for about 20 business days or four weeks. One of the things I have to stress every year is do not share the link with anyone else. Each link is specific to the individual that receives it and is not transferable. If you, re if you are not responsible for completing the self-assessment for your agency and you receive the link by mistake, you need to contact us immediately and let us know who in your agency should get the link. The self-assessment questionnaire is divided into four topic areas. And you can see them here, records management program activities, oversight and compliance activities, records disposition activities, and electronic records management activities. The questions that fall under each of these topics are based on federal laws and regulations that govern, govern records management, as well as NAR guidance. Most questions include the appropriate citation, which respondents can access via a web link. So if you want to go in and see the citation, um, you can do so. The questionnaire contains several different types of questions. Core questions cover the fundamentals of federal records management. We develop these questions so that agencies can measure their progress over time. While the questions are intended to be relatively stable from year to year, as federal records management evolves and laws and regulations change, these questions will change as well. One of the things that you need to know is that all core questions are scored. Verification questions are those that ask for descriptions of, act of an activity or request that you submit documentation to us that supports the answer. For example, we may ask if you have established performance measures for your records management program. The verification might be to send us a copy of those measures, or it may ask that you describe the measures in some detail. We review all documentation we receive according to a set of criteria to determine whether or not the documentation supports your answer to that specific question. And again, going back, uh, we do send agencies a copy of the criteria that we use in advance of the self-assessment. We also ask questions to obtain information about new records management activities and trends, such as cloud computing initiatives. These questions are not scored. Neither are the standard demographic questions. And finally, and this is just something we started last year, we might ask an optional question to solicit information about your agency agency's records management activities that weren't covered in the self-assessment, and also to obtain feedback on the self-assessment itself. In other words, what can we do to possibly improve it? 
um, in the coming years. Once the deadline for the self-assessment has passed, we download the data from the web tool and analyze it. Approximately 90 days after the self-assessment closes, we send agencies their individual report cards, for lack of a better word. These reports show the agency scores for each question, an overall, an overall score, and risk category placement, and the results of our verification process. So it's actually two reports. One report shows the questions and the scores that the agencies receive for each of the, the questions. And the other report um, shows what, how we evaluated or what the, the results of our evaluation of their documentation was. NAR compiles a comprehensive report and sends copies of it to OMB and Congress. This generally occurs in the second or third quarter of the following fiscal year. So you can see that this is a very you know, important process. This has gained a lot of uh, public attention since 2009, both um, from the press and also from congressional subcommittees. So it's something that we take very seriously, and it's something that our agencies take very seriously. Now this is, this is the part I'm sure you're all waiting for, um, tips on how to complete the self-assessment. I say first and foremost, one of the most important things you should do once you receive the advanced copy of the questionnaire, and again, you, will you would receive this at least two weeks ahead of time, is to read it over carefully. Be especially mindful of any definitions that you see in the questionnaire. We make every effort to define ambiguous terms to ensure that agencies can interpret them within the context of the questions. In past self-assessments, we have defined training, performance measures, internal controls, and electronic information systems, for example. Whenever possible, we obtain these definitions from government sources. And we do give the citation for those sources as well. We also recommend that you check out the CFR or any other citations that are um, part of the questions, or at the, we usually put them at the end of the questions. These provide the basis for the questions, why we ask them. Also, after you look over the questionnaire, if you're still not sure that you understand the definitions, uh, you don't understand a question or you don't understand a number of questions or anything else for that matter, if you have any other questions, please, please do not guess. Contact me or a member of the self-assessment team and we'll be most happy to clarify it for you. As much, we try very hard to make the questions clear and concise, but we realize sometimes that um, they could be interpreted maybe a little bit differently than we intend. So if you have any doubts or any questions, um, I am always available and always happy to talk um, with respondents about these things in order to make it clear so you can provide the most accurate information possible. Something else I want to mention right here at this time is that your answers to the self-assessment questions must be specific to your area of responsibility. And what I mean by that is, for example, if you're a records officer for a component or an office, a division, or a military command within a larger agency or cabinet department, your answers should reflect the records management activities in your particular component, office, division, or command, and not the wider organization. I know sometimes it's a little bit difficult um, and there's a little bit of confusion, but the questions are meant to Responses are, are intended, what we want responses to do is, is respond specific to their area of the responsibility. And I realize that in some cases, if you are a component or an office, that you may use your agency's directive or, or things of that nature, or maybe your agency's training, that's acceptable. But all other questions should be as specific as possible to your organization. Another thing we strongly recommend you do is to identify who in your agency has the information you need to answer the questions appropriately. You may have all the information requested, most of it or some of it, at your fingertips. However, there may be other offices you need to consult in order to answer some of the questions accurately. We found this to be particularly true for questions that pertain to electronic records, 
uh, for example, email records, or and also for questions that pertain to electronic information systems. We do ask questions about data migration um, and and thing, and about uh, whether or not certain things are built into the systems. And sometimes we find that our uh, records officers need to consult other offices. We encourage you to do this as soon as possible and get, gather this information. If you do this, you can ensure that you're submitting the most accurate, the most current, and the most complete information regarding your agency's information management practices. And I can't stress this enough, your agency score is dependent on this information. One other thing that we recommend that you do at this particular point is if you have to vet your answers internally before you input them into the web tool, we suggest that you start now. We are aware that sometimes this can be a lengthy process and can take a matter of time. And we suggest that you do it as early as possible into the self-assessment cycle so you'll be able to input the data prior to the deadline. If you're required to submit documentation for verification, and we do indicate that in the questionnaire, the first thing you should do is to look over the document review criteria. Then you need to identify and locate the documentation you need based on the criteria. Also, check the document submission instructions to ensure the documentation is in one of the requested formats. If it's classified or has other restrictions, determine whether or not there's a public use version you can submit. If you plan to submit a redacted version of a document, there must be enough information left in it for us to be able to verify its content. If for some reason you are unable to submit the requested documentation due to a security classification issues or privacy concerns, please contact us as soon as, po us as, soon as possible so we can arrange a site visit so that we can review the documentation at your office or other location. Know the self-assessment deadlines. We alert agencies about the forthcoming self-assessment via RM communication 30 to 45 days in advance. We try to do it as soon as we possibly can. The messages include will include the opening and closing dates for the self-assessment as well as a time period for making changes. We repeat these dates when we distribute the questionnaire and when we open the web tool. While the self-assessment is active, we send reminder messages at intervals so agencies who have not yet responded to the self-assessment, you know, that they get another reminder that the deadline is coming up for completion. If for some reason you're scheduled to be on leave or will be otherwise unavailable during the self-assessment period, and can't submit the, the response for your agency, please designate an al alternate to submit it for you. Contact us, though, if you do this, so that we can send he or she the necessary information about the self-assessment and also a link to the web tool. Again, just underscoring the, report, uh, the point that the web tool, the web links are not transferable. So if you are not going to be the one responding for your agency, you need to notify us of the person who will be responsible, will be responding. If emergency arises, and this has, been, this has happened in the past, and you need to request an extension of the deadline, contact us immediately, and we will see what we can do to help out. And like I said, that has happened. Um, we've had people who have had to unexpectedly take leave um, or have had family emergencies, and we, are, we try to accommodate you as much as we possibly can, but you need to let us know. When you take the self-assessment, make sure your answers are as accurate as possible and reflect the current state of your records management program, and again, for your area of responsibility. I know I've said this, and I keep repeating myself, but it's really important. Any answer you submit should be supported by documentation. And just for your information, there may be times when we follow up with your agency and ask for supporting documentation. Um, this is probably going to be even more likely 
in the future than it has been in the past. And again, if you're not sure what to submit or what we're looking for or what the meaning of something is, please ask. I can't stress this enough. We're always, I'm always available. If not, I'm not available, I will always have to designate or make uh, someone else available in my stead. One other thing, if you've, ha if you've delegated the task of answering all a part of the self-assessment to another staff member. Be sure to ensure that he or she has the information they need to answer all the questions and has access to the supporting documentation. We also recommend that you review your designee's answers and the supporting documentation to ensure they're responsive to the questions that we've asked. Uh, we've, come, we've come up against issues in the past um, where this has been a problem. So we just encourage you to do that. Review the document review criteria and also the document submission criteria instructions carefully. Before you send us your documentation, make it sure it's in one of the requested formats. <clears throat> and please, please do not send us internal or external web links we often can't open them or we can't access them. We, we've had all kinds of difficulties in the past and, and we encourage you to send us, if you want to copy, you know, copy and paste the information into a document, that's fine, but please don't send us links. And make sure that the documents that you do send us are not locked, otherwise we will not, if, if, that, if they are, we won't be able to open them. Finally, label the files that you send us in a way that we, in such a way that we know precisely what they are. And also, if you can make sure that the question number that the document is responsive to is included in the folder title, that's very helpful. If, the, if you're sending a large document and the, and, the do, and the information that we're seeking is embedded within that larger document, please let us know what page or page numbers that the information can be found on. Otherwise, we would have to go, it's not that we would have to go through it, but we might miss it. So you need to be, let us know where precisely we can locate the information. We also recommend that you maintain a list of documents and the specific questions they reference in the event that we have to contact you for additional information. And again, this has happened a number of times in the past. So if you would just keep a handy checklist, that would be very helpful. That's all I have. Um, we post information about the forthcoming self-assessments uh, via Records Express, that's our blog. And I've included the web link where you can find all of our previous records management uh, self-assessment reports that we have done through 2011. 2010 is not up yet, yet, but we hope to have it up shortly. So if you have any questions, I am the floor is open. I'm happy to ask answer as best I can. Thank you for joining us for this recorded web briefing. If you'd like more information about records management training at the U.S. National Archives, please join us online at archives.gov.